Hey everyone, Thoughts Steve here with 3339 Bumblebee here in the Newton Division. Winners of the Israel 1, 3, and Israel DCMP. Really excited to walk down with our top 15 robot. Really excited to talk about their amazing robot. They have a really unique elevator mechanism for their amp. Also pivoting shooter underneath the bumper intake and turret limelight. Really excited to get down here with their special robot here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Neuron, talking about the design and software you have for each of your subsystems, starting with the intake. A drive right. base, starting with a drive base. Okay, so starting with the drive base, here we have a swerve drivetrain. We have our Falcon 500 motor for our, for our steering and our Kraken X60s for our drive. At the beginning of the season, when we strategically analyzed uh, the challenge, we knew that we wanted to be a robot with, to go to a high maximum velocity and have a very fast acceleration. So for that, what we did is we customized our swerve. We now have a, uh, a custom swerve. Our swerve drive started, we started with 6.25 gear reduction, and then we reduced our gear reduction uh, before our first competition to 6.12, right? After our first competition, we knew that we wanted to be even faster. So we reduced our, uh, our gear ratio to 5.55. And after our second competition, uh, to, be, to have faster acceleration, what we did is we made our bevel gear bigger. And for that, we also needed to customize our wheels. So we ended up with a gear reduction of 5.55 and with a uh, customized bevel gear, as you can see, and a customized wheel. As you can see right over here, this is our custom bevel gear. This is the wheel. That's much bigger than normal SDS module. Uh, yeah, uh, it definitely is. And uh, yeah, that's our swerve. One thing I do want to ask about your swerve is the two on the back seem like to be regular MK4Is with, yep. the, with the motors at the bottom. Yep. But over here, you guys have the motors at the top. Why? Yeah, exactly. So for that, I'll go into, if that's fine by you, I'll go yes. uh, to our intake. Yes. Our intake, we have an under the bumper intake. That is to avoid collision, to entirely operated and autonomous. And that, and for that, when we collect, the note goes immediately into the robot with nothing happening outside. And for that, we needed to pull the motors up. We needed to invert them upwise to widen our intake, make it more wide, so we would have more uh, more area to go by. So uh, this is how our intake looks like, under the bumper intake, like I explained. Uh, I'll briefly explain how the note goes in, okay? So, Are you able to get a note to demonstrate as well? Yeah, we can. Uh, let's get a normal collection, okay? Let's get a note. Yeah, so I'll just use normal collection during tele-operated. All right. So as you can see, of course, the LEDs flash green. Uh, so the note goes in through the intake, okay? Once it gets to here, using this infrared sensor right over here, when this infrared sensor senses the uh, note from a certain distance, it starts pushing the note, okay? When this is happening, the driver can start driving back towards the speaker, but the note gets pushed to the same place each time using this uh, end IR over and uh, infrared right over here. So that uh, for consistency, all right? How it works mechanically is that we have these wheels to guide the note to push it. We have these rollers, these carbon rollers to squish the note for consistency. After a lot of prototyping and a lot of shooters, we found out that uh, we knew that squishing the note would be much better and give, and give us more consistency. And we also have these carbon tubes uh, right here on our, uh, on our conveyor. Once uh, the note is in, in the conveyor, we have our shooter. Our shooter right over here is made up of two types of wheels. We have uh, these uh, Coulson wheels. Uh, they are conic wheels. These are the wheels that give the note the spin. When the note is spinning, it falls slower, so uh, and it's more consistent. So we have these notes, these conic uh, Coulson wheels for the spin, and these wheels are just to ensure consistency and that the note uh, flies in the uh, flies in the same direction each uh, and every single time. Our shooter is built of every motor on each axis, on the up and down axis. So you have both axes on different motors, yes. running at the same speed, but because yes. of different wheels, you're able to get a spin. Exactly. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the thing. Of course, sometimes we have this on different distances. We have this bigger than this because sometimes we see the note from afar doing, right. a th doing this. And when it uh, goes up, you want it to go down. So you have this on a higher RPM because you want it to right. be flat. So that's an example for uh, something we do to tune each of our axes. Now with so, your shooter, I see it's also on a pivot. Yes, it's also pivot. on a pivot. So the pivot is what 
adjusts our shooter right. uh, uh, to shoot to the speaker from multiple distances. All right. So uh, our adjustment, our rotations per minute for each uh, axis, and the angle of our drivetrain is determined by this rotating limelight that we have over here. Uh, this rotating limelight tells us at uh, every point of the cycle where our robot is on the field, where it is positioned. So once we know that, we know what RPMs to shoot, uh, to put our shooter, we know what, how to adjust our angle, and we know what angle to put the drivetrain in. This is controlled by the driver when he pleases. Uh, okay, so uh, that's that. Now with the turning limelight, yes. you also have a limelight in the front. Why do you have a turning limelight if you can just face uh, one way and you already have one in the other direction? All right, so uh, these, limelight have, these limelights have different purposes. This is for pose estimation, okay. and this is for automatic collection. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, we have for our driver and for our auto is automatic intake. Uh, this uh, camera nudges the robot in the right direction, and the driver controls theta, and controls angle, and controls uh, the parallel axis to the note and the okay. perpendicular axis is definitely controlled by the um, by the by the camera by the robot itself. So right. that's how the we align ourselves towards the note while driving towards it using uh, angle and uh, and the driver's joystick. Of course. And you use the limelight to also adjust your pivoting, I assume. Yes, the lime this limelight is used to get position, and the position yeah. is used to adjust our pivoting. And in our auto, when uh, we also have uh, an ability to skip notes, that's also when these limelights come in. Okay. For it to be dynamic, you want this limelight to know where I am at each point in the game, and you want this limelight to collect automatically the next note. Right. And what is the angle that this pivot has? I'm sorry? The the angle that the pivot goes to from bottom to top, what is the angle? It's 20 to uh, 64. 22 to 64 degrees? Yeah. All right. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now, with your shooter, you also have an amp mechanism up here yes. that extends. Tell me about this. It seems like you guys yeah. have pool noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got pool noodles on it. That's for sure. Yeah, so this amp mechanism uh, in our home, in our uh, home field, we were shooting to the amp and scoring each time without, uh, without this mechanism. But when we got out to our competition, that we saw that we sometimes missed. All right, and so we decided that we need an amplifier mechanism to keep the note in and not let it go back out. So for that, and to get 100% consistency, we have this guy that goes in, uh, that goes out when we shoot to our amplifier and goes back in after we finish. Are you able to see this in motion? Uh, yeah, we are able to see this in motion. Uh, All right, we got it. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so that's how the amplifier mechanism works. Uh, of course, you see there's a little slap at the end. I don't know if you guys saw it. There's a little slap at the end to keep it in. Right. So that's how the amplifier mechanism works. Uh, in terms of our, we also have, of course, climbers on here. Yes, tell me about uh, that climber. Yeah. So our climbers uh, are controlled by our operator at the end of the game. The operator can put, uh, can control each one independently. Each one is controlled by an independent motor. Okay. So we can go, so we can go up and down, climb to the side, climb in the middle and uh, all that good stuff. And these hooks, uh, why, is it that, why is it designed like this? The design is like this because when the chain rotates, we still want it to lock. We don't want right. it to look, rotate in place. So that's what this is for. Okay. And you told me earlier about some special uh, smart dashboard that you have. Tell me about, yeah. show me so about the smart dashboard. We have a custom dashboard. Uh, you guys can come in. So yeah, uh, uh, first of all, we have two computers here, our pit laptop and our field laptop. Our pit laptop is for debugging. You have this field laptop over here that also has a dashboard on it. This particularly is our screen recording. Our screen recording shows us our joysticks and also shows us what the dashboard, what the drivers see, what field team sees at every point in the game. You have our uh, our game piece limelight, you have our rotating limelight, you have your field and a lot of other metrics over here that you want to see. For example, I'll go to this point in the game, you can see everything working in, uh, in harmony. Uh, things being collected, April tags being uh, caught on camera. So this helps us for debugging. For the this helps us for debugging on the drive team. So the drive team knows, for example, if we have a bu uh, problems with operation, what buttons the drive team press, and it also helps us uh, helps us understand the robot better and know what kind of errors there are, uh, if there are any. All right, now let's hand it off to Inbar. You have a special module that you get that you have called the module hub. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Uh, so last season we had a problem with uh, quickly uh, replace a whole mod uh, all module in the competition. So we started to think about ways to to, quick, uh, to quickly uh, to quickly replace a model. So at the end we created this. 
This is the model hub. Uh, this is uh, basically a part, a, comp uh, a part that we uh, made ourselves that uh, sits on top of the model. You can see right there, or on the robots. So basically, it's um, uh, it's made us to uh, to replace a model with uh, this uh, this part is go to the robot and this to go to the to the motors and this is for for the concoder. So instead of uh, opening up all the gears and the plates and all of this, we can just unplug a couple of wires here, and the whole model can uh, go out with uh, with uh, six screws, of course. And then we uh, can replace it much more easier and much more uh, faster. Uh, beside that, uh, the model can help us with the wiring. It make they make the wiring much easier and uh, and cleaner. Instead of putting all the wires and the connectors on top of the of the model, we can plug all the motors and the concoders and the CAN bus and all of this to one place. And because we use a can a canibur, at the uh, in the in the end model, we put uh, a resistor for the for, for that. What an amazing design that you guys have, and it I love that it fits perfectly on the MK4 eyes. Well, 3339 Bombi, thank you guys walking us through your amazing robot. Thank you. Thank you, Eden and Emmett, for helping demonstrate the robot. Good luck to you guys at this division at Worlds. Again, three blue banners already, and you guys are doing amazing so Thank far. You. So good luck on you guys for the rest of this competition. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.